Okay, hey guys, welcome back to K to PA. I just want to do this video real quick before I go to work. Um, I have like probably 15, 20 minutes to get this done. But um, I recently shadowed a dermatology PA. Um, I went into her office and, you know, at first I, I thought I was going to see a dermatologist, but it turned out to be a dermatology PA. And I just asked her to shadow because I did need some more hours. And I did need like a reference um, for my application. So I was like, okay, let me just go ahead and ask her. And thankfully she said yes. And you know, it was a great experience. Um, I shadowed her for two weeks. So I shadowed from like eight to like 12 p.m. And I really don't like shadowing all day because it kind of feels like a job. And I'm like, I still gotta work. <laughs> so um, I decided, okay, let me just shadow her for four hours um, for about two weeks. And um, it was a great experience. You know, I learned a lot about dermatology and it seems like a really chilled um, field to be a part of. She really loves it. And um, it's not, it wasn't like too hectic, you know? So if, you, if you're one of those people, you don't like all the emergency stuff like that you see in the ER, this is probably something that you would enjoy. Um, a lot of what we did was like, you know, um, some patients come in yearly for a skin check and that's to see, like if you have like lighter skin, um, you go in and you see if like, if you see a mole on your skin or like a, a wart or whatever it is, you want to make sure that it's not cancerous. So, you know, we saw a lot of those patients that just came in for a skin check and um, a lot of them had just like she called them over 30 spots so like you know as you mature and if your skin is like really light um, you get like these spots on there just because you're aging and um, she just had to basically look at them to determine whether they were like cancerous or not and she's she said a lot of dermatology has to do with touching so she didn't really wear any gloves like I'm one of those people I'm like obsessed with wearing gloves but um, she said she doesn't really wear gloves because a lot of um, like dermatology is about like touching and feeling and you know kind of trying to see like what you're working with. Um, we talked about um, actually we did a surgery. Um, she called it a Mo surgery, M O, and I guess that's the initial the initials of the person who actually came up with that kind of surgery. And it's basically surgery surgery on more like sensitive parts of the body, like the face um, and like the arm or wherever. Like it's, it's basically um, to remove um, like cancer, like a cancer cell or something. Um, and I actually got to participate in that surgery. It's not an invasive surgery, so you didn't have to gown up or anything, but we did create like a sterile feel it was like surg someone had like um, skin cancer on their back and we basically create like a sterile feel so anything blue in the um, operating room is sterile so you got to be careful so um, we wore a mask and you know we had gloves on and so we didn't and no gown and basically you know she just showed me like how she um, created like a margin around this the skin cancer to remove that layer of skin um, and she showed me like the dermis layer and the subcutaneous layer and she showed me basically what that those layers look like so that was really cool and then she showed me like a, a stitching method that she used to make sure like the um, the scarring was minimal um, especially dealing with women like we don't like scars all over our body so she showed me like a great technique um, in order to prevent that um, and I have like a little video showing you guys it's surgical tool and um, another thing that that they use um, that she used was the bovi and basically um, it cauterizes the skin and that's she said it it basically prevents bleeding after the surgery is completed um, so she showed me like how to use that and I did um, have like some experience with that um, from shadowing a pediatric um, surgeon so I remember the bovi um, this thing is about to die okay let's continue 
Um, one other thing that we talked about was um, I asked her about malpractice insurance and she basically said as a PA you don't really pay for that you know especially like in um, dermatology you don't have to pay for it so basically the doctor that owns a practice is the one that's paying for malpractice insurance for everyone so he has to pay for his own and he also has to pay for the PAs because if the PA gets sued that means that the doctor is also gonna get sued um, so um, keep that in mind if you want to be a doctor <laughs> um, and but she said one um, form of insurance that you can pay for as a PA is called tail insurance and for tail coverage and basically you know this you you purchase this in case you leave a practice Let, let's say I'm working at one office and I decide okay I'm not gonna work there anymore I'm gonna move on and work somewhere else just because I left that doesn't mean that someone can't sue me so basically this coverage helps um, in that you know if you leave a practice and someone sues you you're still covered and she said um, with her malpractice insurance she's covered up to like a million dollars but um, in dermatology people don't really sue so you know that's more of a safe area you know if you want to work in that area it's, it's, it's a little bit more safe than some other um, areas of medicine um, I asked her if she went to any of those AAPA conferences and she basically said no <laughs> she's not interested you know it's more money that she has to like um, she has to pay for um, and it's not really going to benefit her in any way um, and they do get money the practice um, does give them money for their education their CME hours um, I believe it's 100 every two years um, as a PA um, and you basically it's limited so they can go to different conferences but the AAPA is not really going to help them you know so she's like um, she doesn't go to those and I asked her about student loans and um, she said she pays around nine hundred dollars a month for her um, student loan and she has like a five-year plan and she said some people like have like a 10-year plan let's say you have a loan that's over a um, hundred thousand dollars then you're you most likely have a 10-year plan um, personally I want to get like some kind of scholarship you know so I'll try to seek that out um, and $900 sounds kind of crazy like at least on my level because I'm you know that's probably like a paycheck for me <laughs> but um, you know yeah that's it seems crazy now but you know she's a PA so that tells you that PAs you know make a little bit of money um, let's see what else um and we talked about the pants um, and she she basically said like when you um, when you take the pant when you get done with school just make sure you take the pants like right away because you don't want to like wait months and months like trying to study and then you forget everything um, she said you'll be surprised at how much you remember in those two years um, so just take it like right away and um, don't like get comfortable after school and just say and put off taking the test um, and what else um, yeah that's that's all I can think of right now but overall it was a great experience and you know she did agree to like give me a letter afterwards like she was really nice that was like one of the, the more chilled um, shadowing experience I've had because um, sometimes when you shadow people they kind of treat you like eh, whatever you know you're off to the side and um, some people only interact with you when you ask them questions but, you know, I kind of felt like she really took time out to show me what she was doing, you know. And that was, and she actually let me participate in the surgery. I mean, I didn't really do much, but, you know, <laughs> it was like a cool experience. Um, and, you know, um, oh, she also, like, one other thing that they do a lot in dermatology is, um, like, let's say you have an age spot. They actually freeze um, those spots so that it's it doesn't like grow or anything um, and they they freeze it with like liquid nitrogen and I have a little um, video of that that I'm gonna be showing you guys oh, 
Ooh. Wow. I'll show you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thing will burn your skin off. Yes, it will. Careful. <laughs> so, so, what are these tools? Um, scalpel, you already know. The pickups, sharp scissors it is used for the provider. These are, um, so this is a body kit. Mm -hmm. So this is just for undermining. Um, your driver, your clamps, and then a hemostat. The dull scissors are for your assistant, mm -hmm. and so is the hook. Okay, what about these? The sutures? <coughs> it depends on what sutures they want. Since these two are, you know, absorbable, they both can go in there. And then the other absorbables are the chromic... Uh, we have fast mm -hmm. absorbing sutures, um, and the non-absorbable non-absorbable are the nylons and proline. Okay. <coughs> Prolines are blue, nylons are black. Okay. Okay. Um. So I think that's about it. Like I can't really think of anything else right now that we um we did. But it's, dermatology is very chilled. You know, if you have a chill personality, you want to go in, make your little money and, you know, go home. They make good money too. When I say little money, I don't mean like little money, I'm, you know, but um, it seems really cool. I think I would want to start off maybe in emergency medicine um, because even though it's chill, I can see myself getting a little bit bored. You know, um, but I can see myself working in different um, areas simultaneously. So I would be like doing probably dermatology and like ER or something. But I, I did notice that a lot of PAs get comfortable in their field. You know, so let's say they're doing ER, they kind of just stick to ER. Or if they're doing P's, they kind of stick to that. Um, and she basically said all she wanted to do is dermatology. Um, <laughs> she's not really interested in um, working in different fields because I mean with the PA profession you can you have that lateral mobility so you're able to work in different fields which is something I really love about the profession. Um, and yeah so that was that's basically it. Um, I'm going to show you guys a quick video of some of the tools that we use for the surgery and um, the liquid nitrogen that we use to freeze um, the different like spots on the patients. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and you know, I'm going to try and make it on time for work today. <laughs> um, I'm really bad with that, but I'm going to try and be professional today. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.